So I've got coffee number two in front of me, Gathaifi Kenya by Hola Coffee Roasters, who are based in Madrid in Spain. Great to meet you guys. So introduce yourselves and um, tell us a little bit about Hola Coffee. So thank you for having us. Um, it's a pleasure. Um, my name is Nolo, this is Pablo. Uh, we are the, the minds behind Hola Coffee uh, Roasters that was a, uh, it's a coffee business that started in 2017 after Pablo competed in two, uh, the year before in the Spanish Barista Championship uh, where he won it and he represented uh, in the World Coffee uh, Championships. Um, I was helping him with uh, the training, being part of the team and after comp he competing we saw that um, we wanted something different for Madrid. We were working for the different companies, but that was kind of like that. The key, the turning point of the, uh, that made us do something different, approach coffee in a different way. So we opened um, a coffee shop. Yeah, we were thinking about uh, keep uh, roasting our coffee or opening a coffee shop because we, uh, with our savings, we couldn't uh, afford both. Uh, Nolo was into roasting. I was more into barista and training. Um, we decided to start uh, hiring other facilities uh, of other roasters, commercial roasters, and being like nomad roasters or gypsy roasters, as they call it, and opening with our savings the coffee shops where we could like show uh, and introduce the, the the way that we wanted to serve coffee. So in 2017, uh, there was more seen in Barcelona than in Madrid. There was a few coffee shops, not a lot of coffee roasters. And since 2017, kind of Madrid, um, everything just pop up yeah, and, bloom. and bloomed. So the scene is pretty, pretty big right now. Um, there's more than 10 coffee, small coffee roasters, roasteries, and more than 30 coffee shops. So it's kind of a nice place to be. Um, even with COVID situation, we are able to be open, so we are happy to do it. Um, we opened our roastery in 2019, so we expand a little bit our business. Um, we are doing a lot of online sales through our online shop. Um, we keep doing a lot of coffee trainings, as Pablo is an AST of the SCA, of the Specialty Coffee Association. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus a lot in coffee training and developing more that, that scene in the city. So that's more or less that's what, that what we do. We do. <laughs> so I'm curious, when was the time that you first really saw the difference between regular coffee and specialty? Because I'm always interested to hear about a Spanish person's journey because you love coffee in Spain, but traditionally more roasty. So I know obviously the scene in Barcelona was, was emerging a few years before Madrid. So what was the transformation, do you think, for you guys as Madridians? Uh, well, we, uh, maybe you started a little bit earlier in 2011 or 10 yeah, in Barcelona? Uh, I started in Barcelona. I'm, I'm from Galicia in the northwest of Spain. Uh, I used to be studying in Barcelona, uh, graphic design and product design, so it was completely different. Um, and during the crisis, I was doing some uh, uh, bartending and doing some waiting jobs. So in, I discovered coffee in Barcelona in 2011 in a, in a coffee shop owned by Australians. Uh, suddenly, there was like something different. I'm a, I used to be a heavy coffee drinker, um, and, but the difference was just like, oh, this is a little bit different. Even the guy who was roasting, it was a little bit too roasty for, for what we understand at this point. But there was this fruitiness. There was not like this robusta beans that were on the market in Spain or uh, what we call torrefacto, that is roasting the coffee cooling it down during the cinnamon stage and then roasting again with adding sugars, like one part of sugar, so it becomes a layer 
that is melted over the surface of the bean that is quite common in Spain since the 1930s, more or less. So that was the bitter scene with like super low quality beans. And at the point, like what we call natural roast in Spain is not something about the process of the bean, it's more about the, the roasting process without adding the sugars. So at that point, everything changed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For me. For me, it was uh, very similar, maybe a year later, uh, here in Madrid. And I, I was uh, too a uh, heavy drinker. I, 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 I had a lot of coffee. I was like, um, I, what we call here, cafetero, like heavy, drink, heavy coffee drinker, um, but really low quality. And I thought at that, at that time that uh, drinking a lot of coffee was like being super tough and super... I don't know. And then I discovered in this little place in Madrid uh, that they started doing way, uh, coffee in a different way. And I used to go there because they loved bicycles and I was, um, uh, I love bicycles too. And started to discover uh, this specialty coffee very early seen here in Madrid. And then suddenly I, I had to throw away all my supermarket coffee at home and start buying that coffee. Yeah. And then I started working there. Yeah, Pablo and me, we met, actually we met in, in around 10 or 12 years ago studying in Barcelona. Then we lost track of each other. And in 2011, something like that. Uh, the late, that yeah, yeah that we, that we both were working in coffee. So suddenly it was just like, what are you doing, man? We, <laughs> we never expected that we were going to end. Oh, you know what latte art is too? Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. And lucky for us, we met again in uh, 2012 uh, during the London Coffee Festival because we were mm -hmm. living in different cities. So in that time, we kind of found our own paths in two different cities. Then I moved to Madrid um, to run a, a coffee business owned by, this, by these Australians that I started with them. And we had the opportunity to work for our commercial coffee company, Pablo and me together. And that's when we started to, to develop a specialty coffee line for that commercial coffee company. Uh, so we were establishing more relation, working together. Yeah, we learned a lot too, yeah. because we found, we found what commercial coffee companies, uh, how they work. Um, there are some interesting things there too, about how, how they market coffee. Um, and, but yeah, we, that uh, quality wasn't our thing and we started also to develop the Ola Coffee blog and started to dream about having our own company. Yep. Oh. And uh, I want to talk specifically about Gathayati though. So um, you, how did you discover this coffee um, and what is it about it that's intrigued you? Um, just tell us as much as you can about the background of Gathayati. So when we started, we used to, uh, as new beginners in a coffee company, as it was Ola in the early stages, that it still is, uh, we used to look for coffees through coffee importers. And um, at the beginning, we were just like getting some different coffees from, from different importers, uh, working with four or five during the year. Um, in one point, we thought that, uh, what we want about sustainability uh, is as we don't have the media or the resources to start going to, to different countries and search for the coffees ourselves, we thought about sustainability is just to reduce to the minimum the, the amount of coffee importers that we work. So, so as, as we want uh, coffee shops to work mostly with our beans because that Establish like a line of business that is more or less a stable long -term and long-term relationships. We start to reduce this 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 business with different coffee importers, and, and we start to focus with one that is more local here in Spain, where I learn how to cup and I develop as a Q grader with him. So at that time, we were working with mostly the Kyunju, the other coffee from Kenya that we have. Uh, it's been several, it's been with us for three years more, more or less. And um, we discovered Gathaiti this year. It was a different, completely different uh, profile from Kyunju that was more 
fresh, a little bit more acidic, uh, more kind of like in the green tea lines. Mm -hmm. But with Gathaiti, we fell in love with the fruitiness that he has. So that coffee is for us pretty complex. It has this plum acidity, also red fruits, but on the on the part of sweetness. Yeah, and extremely sweet. Uh, tones of caramel, a little bit of vanilla, honey, and and a really nice chocolatey aftertaste on it. Maybe it's not that that acidic as the Kyunju is. So for our market, we wanted another kind of Kenya, a more um, round and there's some flower notes too that we didn't find in the other Kenya. So this whole other flavors were, was what we had, were attracted with this coffee. And yeah. for the information that we have with the, with the Gathaiti coffee factory, that is the, the washing station where I think is sustained by 1,600 uh, different coffee producers in uh, Kenya, farmers. Mm -hmm. farmers. So with those farmers sell the coffee to the Gathaiti washing station in Nigeri. And they do a pretty amazing job with the cleanliness and, and the sweetness that we can find on this green coffee and then we transform it through roasting. So what is it you think is the What's the toughest challenge in converting people in Spain? Some challenges because here in Spain, people are used to cheap coffee. So that's the first step that we know in London is more common to pay like three, four pounds for a cup of coffee. Here in Spain, this is the first challenge that we found in the coffee shops. Nowadays, people are more used to this way of specialty coffee, but still a challenge. And yeah. then it's the flavor. Yeah, in the beginning of our coffee shop, um, when you start a coffee business, of course, you're going to focus on the, on the coffees that you love, right? It's going to, yeah, I'm going to just like search for the best beans, really amazing complexity. But then you open and you think, okay, I'm buying green coffee and roasting just for ourselves or a small group because the thing is developing and there's not a wide amount of customers that understand uh, specialty coffee or the flavors behind it so in that time we were working a lot and trying to just like think as as our customers and we start buying beans that were more similar in terms of flavor to what like yeah like sweet coffees like extremely sweet coffees and that goes through brazilian coffees our coffee that we sell the most through our wholesale, wholesale partners and our home uh, customers, it is mostly the Brazil. It is a uh, Finca Santo Andre that is a sweet Brazilian coffee, not really grown in a high altitude. And it's mostly no caramel acidity. notes, uh, low acidity, but still with a hint of apple, yeah. uh, a lot of chocolate chocolate on it and a few notes of almond and peanut that is nice so when we we called that coffee the transition coffee so when you come to the coffee shop it is a coffee that suits really well with uh, milk-based drinks that is mostly the 80 to 90 percent of the drinks that people drink in spain there's not like a lot of people that drinks just black coffee uh, or espresso um so yeah, with so that coffee, they just like yeah. discover that oh, this is not roasty. This tastes better. And after a month, they want to explore more ideas. So then they go with a watermelon that we have that is a little bit uh, more complex, but it's still really easy and step by step. The thing is just like don't, it's don't, not forcing people to yeah. understand things. It's because just you like can't scare them. Yeah, just bring them a wide range of coffees so for transitioning through more complex flavors. Very clever. You guys are doing the right thing. First, there's this step. This is not going to be a super shocking flavors. And then day by day, they start feeling more comfortable in our shop with our coffees at home. And then someday they discover a new coffee. Yeah. We don't want to force them or push or them. Or push them. I just like... 
I don't know, it's just like a staircase. You want to go from one floor to the other and you know that you have to go step by step, right? Mm -hmm.